Hey everyone, this is QA Shahin and today we are going to look at writing a very simple test in Jasmine. This is effectively going to carry on from exactly where we left off in the last video, but the focus for this video is to particularly look at the really simple test we wrote and to talk about it a little bit more and try and understand exactly what is happening. So this video is going to be very practical heavy in that by mean we're just going to look at what the describe block is what the it block is and then write a couple of tests and examine what the console output looks like in the previous video what we did was we created a folder called jasmine project and inside this project folder we ran a command called jasmine init which essentially initialized this project to be very jasmine friendly in essence, all that basically did was created a spec folder and created a various other folders within that. But the focus was that it created a spec folder and inside this folder we wrote this very simple test. Now, let's talk about uh, this test in particular. So the first thing about this test is that if you remember, to run a test in Jasmine, the default behavior dictates that all of our test files are called spec.js so the file ends in spec.js so you could call it whatever you want you can call it for example if you wish then you can call it anything like my test.spec.js or you can call it my test 2 or you can call it sample anything you want as long as it ends with spec.js so that is exactly what we did here so what we're going to do is examine this test file a little bit more in detail in this particular video and try and figure out exactly what is happening so what is this what does this all mean so let's get rid of this for the moment and let's just start from scratch the first thing we wrote was was called the describe block and all the describe block does is it is designed to contain multiple tests so the describe block itself isn't a test it is a way of grouping a test the describe block is used to group together tests which naturally belong together so for example let's say we have a calculator application and you want to test several of the functions in your calculator class one such function might be the ability to add multiple numbers together and let's just say you wrote three or four tests around adding numbers you know addition then you may decide to write all of these tests inside a single describe block in other words this describe block would be describing the ability to add multiple numbers and that is effectively the purpose of a describe block. So if we kind of go further from that, what does that mean? How do you actually get a describe block to kind of express that? Well, the way you do it is to pass in a string, which is effectively going to be the name represented for the describe block. Now, it's in our interest to always give it a name that is very understandable and very easy to read. And we'll get to that why a little later when we start to look at console output. So for the moment, I will write something like calculate addition. So by doing this, what I'm basically saying is that this describe block will check to see or rather it will contain tests which describe the addition feature of a calculating class now a describe block actually takes in two parameters the first is the name that you want to pass in in other words this is what the describe block will be represented as when the test runs and the second is a function Now, what is a function? Now, in JavaScript or in many other languages, whether they're programming or scripting, 
functions serve as something that allow us to perform various types of actions. So in this case, a function will be something that we do something inside. Now, when you write a function, when you want to write it as part of a describe block, the way to write it is function followed by two brackets, followed by two curly braces. And the code that you would want to write for that function will go inside the curly braces. Now, this particular type of syntaxing can look a bit ugly. It can look a bit scary when you first do it. But once you've done it a couple of times, then it does become very second nature. and It does become a little bit more easier to use. So for the moment, what we have now is a describe block, which has two parameters. The first is a string, which is the name of the describe block. And the second is a function, which is the code that will go in inside this describe block. Now, when we run Jasmine on the command line, what it basically does is it looks for spec.js file that we've already discussed. But when it eventually finds the spec.js file, the first thing it does is it scans through that particular JavaScript file. And if it is able to find a describe block, it starts to tell the describe block, now you start running. And the first thing the describe block does is it starts to run any code associated with it. And in this case, the function is what gets executed when the describe block actually starts to run. Now let's talk about the it block. So the it block is effectively our test. The it block is where you write your tests. Now an it block actually looks very similar to the way the describe block does. It has, first of all, a string. And again, we should try to give it a name that would make it easier for us to understand. Followed by a function. And then it is inside the function of the it block that you actually write some type of test code. So now, if you have a look, what we're basically saying is describe calculate addition it should be able to add two numbers together. Now, if you ignore all of this stuff for the moment and just read it as it is, so describe calculate addition it should be able to add two numbers together. That alone sounds very, very BDD orientated. And by that I mean it sounds very behavioral driven. In other words, this is describing some kind of behavior. Now, if we say actually do something, so let's just say console.log and for the moment, we're just going to write a really basic statement, something like I was able to add two numbers together. And I just leave it at that and let's just save it and let's go to the console and try and run it. So I'm going to go inside the project and I'm just going to say Jasmine. And notice when I ran Jasmine, it picked up the test because I know that by the fact that he was able to pick up the test. But more importantly, it was able to print out the log inside that particular test. So this is evidence that he was able to run the test. If I now go back to the file and if I now copy this and let's just write some other test. So in here, instead of two numbers, let's say something like three. Save that and I try to run the test again. This time, Jasmine was able to find two specs, in other words, two tests, and he was able to run them both. It ran the top one first because sequentially the top one appeared first and then the second one. If we go back, we can also have multiple it blocks in a describe block, but you can also have multiple describe blocks inside a describe block. So for example, you can do something like this. And then in here, you can have more tests.
So let's go back and run this. I can now see that it has now run three tests. So going back, this may not make a lot of logical sense. Why would you want to do this? But let's think about this for a second. By being able to write multiple tests in a describe block, it gives us the ability to group tests which are closely related together. By having the ability to have a describe block inside a describe block, it also gives us the ability to have very, very specific tests. Now, functions such as this become very handy when we start to think about hooks, which we'll go into in a much later video. But for the moment, this video should now give you enough information about what these blocks are and what they mean, as well as how to write the names of the test in a very sensible manner because Jasmine is deemed to be a BDD tool. So it's in our interest if we write our test in such a way that it describes the behavior of our tests. And that's it for this video, folks. In this particular video, we had a detailed look at the test that we wrote in the last video. In particular, we had a close look at the describe and the it block, and we looked around some ruling around the number of tests you can have in a describe block, as well as having multiple describe blocks in a describe block. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.